This is a quick video on photography. Photography is a very interesting um, field. You'll certainly look at photography and photos because they are texts. And when you look at them, you'll be looking at them in language and literature as bodies of work. So that means the photographer is a creator. These are not just people pressing click or, you know, on the camera and hoping for the best. So there's some of the best photography is absolutely staggering. And so there's a, quite a few things to think about when you look at a photo. But where you'll be using these and where you'll have the chance to analyze these are in the individual oral and possibly, potentially, the higher level essay if you do HL. Okay, so first interesting thing about photography, the way we read photographs, we read them like text and we read them from left to right. Now have a look at this picture here from the film Romeo and Juliet. You can see if we tend to read from left to right. So a reading of this photograph gives you the sense that Juliet is in charge of the situation and that she is in some way refusing Romeo. Whereas, if we reverse that, we get a different sense of the power of, of the male figure here because he's on the left. And suddenly, the same thing, which looked like she was in charge, looks like she is being asked for something and he has the upper hand. So subtle things like that really make a difference. Then there's great photography um, portraits as a stasis. So this is by the American photographer Annie Leibovitz. Brilliant photography of the Queen. And I'm going to show you in a moment uh, the same photographer's work uh, in a totally different setting. But what we notice here is that the Queen, subject of the picture, has been placed in the bottom right quadrant of the photograph. And that helps to give her emphasis. Okay. Also, you have the lighting, but the political status of this picture is immense. I mean, look at just look at how important she appears to be. Now you have the flowing gown, but her position there in the foreground of the photograph, where the, the background is in darkness, is a very dramatic way of showing her power. Compare that to this picture by the same photographer, in which the Queen is in the middle, and her daughter, Princess Anne, is on the right-hand side, and the whole, you know, whole feel of this photography is totally different. I mean, look at that compared to that. Okay, so positioning, lighting, and emphasis are things that are key. Okay, foreground and the bottom right quadrant. Also then, photography is used uh, to be imbued with immense political, um, political meaning. So the figure of Gandhi here. Now, Gandhi was a nationalist figure in India hugely, uh, like really the leader of the modern day state of India. He didn't go or he is dressed in, in a white loincloth and he's reading a newspaper and he's sitting by the little spinning uh, weaving device which appears on the Indian flag. Now Gandhi asked for this photo to be taken. He, he, he staged this photograph. It makes him look as though he is, we, you know, the father of the nation and of, of great humble origins because he's almost naked. But he didn't walk around like this. This was entirely for the camera. And it sets a very different, I mean, he was a politician, but he, um, he staged this photo. So in the foreground of the photo, you have the, the Indian spinning device, um, which, which is very important in the construction of this photograph and what he is wearing. So it's a dramatic photo that, that becomes his image Okay, so parts of the photograph, terms to be aware of, foreground and background. Now, these are both essential elements of a photograph because they, the foreground here creates the dramatic, leads the, the eye to look at the background where the focus is on the mountain. <clears throat> and this gives a sense of perspective. So those elements are a part of the composition, which are very important. So <clears throat> there's balance, which is needed. Balance can be symmetrical or asymmetrical, so remember those terms. Um, uh, positive and negative space is important. Negative space is where nothing is really happening. So if we go back to the Gandhi image, the white background is negative space, okay? And the positive space is the carpet, and obviously he is part of that, and the, the spinning device 
<clears throat> uh, figure ground relations is a, is, a, is the, how we look at the how the way the, the artist composes the background as well as the major figures. The rule of thirds. I'm going to explain that in a moment. That's a very important thing. And you place um, the important objects in a certain position on the image. And classical balance is where you have a centered subject. So the nearest we have to that was this picture of the queen with Princess Anne. Okay, so remember these terms because there's going to be a quiz on what they mean. Okay, rule of thirds. Now you will have seen probably on your on your mobile phone there is the option to create this grid on a camera lens and simply lines but a rule of thirds is that the most the best way to emphasize or to make a good quality picture to compose a good quality photograph is to uh, is to to use this principle so you place the important objects that you want within one of the intersecting lines in the in the photograph and that just makes a a photo that is pleasing to uh, that is pleasing to the eye. It's just a belief. Also, there we have something that is called the golden ratio. The golden ratio is a is was considered and has always been considered as the most beautiful naturally occurring pattern. So there is uh, even our skulls re represent this kind of of, of shape. You can see it in seashells and flowers. Um, it, it's, a, it's a shape that comes up in nature. And so it's not a case of, of random photographs just being taken or things being random. There is beauty in form, and that's what the golden ratio demonstrates to us. Um, the Renaissance artists called this the divine proportion. OK, then another thing that you need to look at when you're looking at uh, photographs is lines and vectors. So there are always lines moving through a photograph, and lines can be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, um, or they can have a shape combined together. For example, if you have a square, circle, or triangle, that becomes a shape within a photograph. But otherwise, you will often find there are lines that have been deliberately taken or, or placed there. So for example, lines like this, are very important. They create the mood of the photograph and they crucially lead the eye through the photograph. So obviously your eye starts here and you cannot help but look to the end of the line. That is the, 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 the intended progression of the way you read the photograph. So to summarize, we have lines, we have vectors, uh, golden ratio, rule of thirds, the idea of balance, uh, parts of the photo photograph, foreground and background and perspective, photos of having political status and meaning, um, the use of the bottom right quadrant, and the reading from left to right on a photograph.